Hello and welcome to Edupedia World. So now we want to take a look at how we can do uh, a multipass render where Cinema 4D does more of the work for us. So we want to just um, I deleted all the pictures from the last render and I want to render it again because yeah I'm going to change some settings but the last render was very slow therefore I'll change the sampling quality just to just low um, yep so in this example will I be um, adding all uh, of the image layers and you may be saying why we can actually try and just add all the layers like this now we've got all the different layers that uh, Cinema 4D offers and uh, you may say uh, well we're only using 30% of the layers and they're going to take up they're going to take a lot of time to um, they're going to take a lot of time to composite together but since we're going to be doing this in a different way we can actually get Cinema 4D to um, composite it all together for us. Um, a thing to keep in mind is that every time you add a uh, layer you're going to add more um, sorry your render is going to take up more space so if we go into the save tab you can see I'm saving this as a TIFF and a TIFF is uncompressed that means it's going to take up a, 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 an image that's going to be just like pure black it's going to take up um, just as much space as the whole, like the saved image up here. So therefore, I'm going to change this to something like P and G instead. And that means if I've got a completely black image, it's going to take up less space than uh, an image with actual color on it. So right now you can see I've got the same uh, destination folders. The only thing I've changed is that I've changed the fo format to PNG. And uh, the thing we want to try this time is using a compositing file. So, using a compositing file, you can actually get Cinema 4D to do all of this, um, all the blending. Um, by itself, or they can do it for you, and you can also make it um, export 3D data. So you can do this uh, after you have done the render, and this is the way I prefer to do it. So let's first of all close this and just render the picture. So right now you can see the picture is being rendered. And since I've got the low uh, sampling quality enabled, it's going to be very quick. If I enable the picture, you can see this is what I've got. And within a few minutes, it's going to be done. Um, so I will let this render out. And I think I may not even have to... Uh, Just going to delete the pictures from last time. I don't think I have to pause the video. Um, if we go into the single pass, you can see we've got all these different layers, and a lot of them are just going to be pure white and pure black. The reflection, refraction, ambient inclusion, they are all here, but a lot of them are just pure uh, black or white. Um, but that doesn't matter because Cinema 4D will know how to um, composite this all together. So we don't actually have to know anything. Um, it seems a little bit weird, but we actually don't know, don't need to know how to do any of this because Cinema 4D is an extremely smart piece of software. So you can see. 1 minute and 40 seconds in, we are almost done with the render, and I'll just let this finish up. So 
So, this is now very, sorry, this is now done very soon. Um, don't know why it's taking so long. Bam, 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 and we are done. We can open up our folder and this is all our layers. We will now close this, go into our render settings once again, and now we want to go into um, the save tab compositing file and we want to check this out. So right now it has not been set to save. If we were to set this to save, then whenever we render this file will be saved with it. Um, the target application is of course going to be set to After Effects. You can see there are other options. After Effects. Um, and then we can just hit save project file if we only want um, the yeah I'll show you but if we, if we just save this out then we'll be able to open it in After Effects and it's going to be able to uh, composite it all for us but if we hit include 3D data then we're going to be able to do something very cool so if I'll just I'll just close this and um, move out here so let's say we want to um, add something add some I don't know some graphics or maybe a uh, what could it be we maybe want to add some kind of a lens flare or something in the After Effects then this is a way we could do it so we could take this just add like a simple light go in and turn the intensity to zero and um, then we could take this light and just move it back something like this look through our camera once again and uh, fine-tune the position so let's say we want our flare to be right here then that's going to be all right so if we go in here and check include 3d data that means it's going to export the position of all these lights and uh, all the null objects and all that stuff that's all going to be exported into um, After Effects so if we were to have a animated camera then we'd be able to get these positions into After Effects in the correct space alright so we will just hit uh, save project project file and I will browse to the location where I've got this all saved and New York scene dot AEC that's what it's called dot AEC after face compositing file I'm pretty sure and just hit save and then it's going to um, save it and if you have a long animation that it's going to be saving it for maybe half an hour if it's very long and if you have a lot of um, information but this time it was very quick you may think that your program have crashed but don't be scared it's not crashing it's just taking a very long time to save it so if we go into After Effects and open up our folder then we will be able to see our AEC file right here we can drag this in and not worry about any of these pictures just drag in the AEC file and you'll see we've got a folder called image and a folder called special passes. If you look up here, then all the image files are going to be the ones that if you just remove all this, all the image files are going to be, if you say add image layers, then those are the ones that are saved on the image and the rest are the ones called the material layers so I'll just add all of them once again and uh, yeah so you'll see that there's a composition in here called image if we double click on this then you'll see a composition opening up where we've got all these different image layers all added together and um, try to highlight all of this, drag it up. 
as you can see we have got the atmosphere all this and the um, blending modes have been set correctly the image is looking a little bit weird right now and that's because we want to set this to 32 bits click on it and we want to change the uh, workspace to srgb and linearize the workspace and uh, the reason why we want to do this is because if you go into our uh, sorry cine 40 press ctrl and d then you'll be able to see that we are working with linear workflow linear work workflow in srgb therefore we want to match the settings in uh, after effects we've now got We've now got an image that looks like the one rendered in Cinema 4D. So if we look in here at the image, this should look very identical to the one in After Effects. But this consists of a million different layers. So right now you can see the atmosphere is not being used. So we can just start deleting the layers that aren't being used. And um, this is a pretty good way of doing it, in my opinion, because you don't really have to think and you don't miss any of the channels. So you can see how all these channels are being used. But let's say you forgot to render out the ambient occlusion. That means your picture would be looking like this instead of this. And in order to get this effect, you would have to re-render everything. And that's not what we want. You can see Cinema 4D also included the light um, that we placed in the scene. For some reason, Cinema 4D is not showing this large tower that is right here. I actually don't know why it's not being shown, because it's definitely there in the render. Since the level of DVD has been set to high, I don't know why it's not being shown. Maybe I've got... I don't know actually. This is it's a very long time since I made this and I don't know why this tower shows up when I render right here in this position. Yeah, for some reason there's a tower there. Let me just see if there's something over here. No, there's not. Hmm, that is pretty strange, but it should still prove my point. You're able to take a light position and, um, sorry, and edit into your render like this and what you could do with this would be something like creating a solid called maybe optical flares and um, you could just get the f the uh, sorry the um, this optical flare and make it track the lights and since this light was set to um, 0% in the intensity the flare will do the same so we just have to go into the light and um, increase it once again and the reason we set it to 0% in Cinema 40 was because we didn't want it to affect uh, our render and if we render this on a transparent then you will see this being added onto our render so you may want this to be out to the side like this because it's it's messing with it's, it's not looking realistic if you can see the flare uh, right in front of the building there's no reason why it would be, would be there um, but we can now go in start changing the reflections I want the reflections dimmed down a little bit and I also want the ambient to be brighter. The ambient, remember, that is, I want to change the ambient occlusion to just make it darker. And I want to do the same thing with the shadow. Make the shadows darker like this. And right now, this is looking pretty decent in my opinion. And I don't have to re-render anything. If this was the animation that I've talked about a few times, I would have had to re-render this at least a few times and that could be taking one this that could make this one or two days longer to make and um, well time is money so why not spend it wisely 
Thank you for watching Edupedia World. Stay tuned for more videos.